Hello, and welcome back to the second session of the Coaching Foundation Skills Series. This module will focus on how using rationales when coaching will allow for meaningful connections. The MyMTSS Technical Assistance Center would like to acknowledge and give thanks to Karen Ward, Karen Blase, and the National Implementation Research Network for sharing this work to enhance the knowledge and skills for all district and school level coaches. Following this module, you will be able to identify reasons why people are not ready for change, understand the two variables that contribute to people's readiness for change, outline the components of a rationale necessary to work with people who are not quite ready to change their practices, identify strategies we can use when working with those individuals, and practice providing rationales with a partner. This slide spotlights where on the Coaching Foundation Pyramid this skill appears. As a reminder, when we are learning to use the Coaching Foundation skills, we tap into these skills when we notice that we need to raise the iceberg. Additionally, each skill, excuse me, additionally, each level of the skill pyramid builds off of the other. Understanding the stages people go through when they are being asked to change their professional practices and or behavior will allow us to know when to use these skills. As an organization is preparing to introduce change to their systems, programs, and or practices, we can expect that the staff will fall into one of these three categories. If we know that approximately 80% of the staff are not prepared for the coming change, how will we approach getting them ready? Individuals in the pre-contemplation stage most likely have no knowledge of the upcoming change. Meaning it isn't even on their radar. Individuals in the contemplation stage have knowledge of the change, but are not yet ready to embrace the change. So we can think of these individuals as not yet committed to changing their pro professional practices or behavior. In our context of preparing individuals to implement a MTSS framework, a PBIS initiative, or school-wide reading model, we need to ask ourselves, as coaches, how will we prepare ourselves to support moving staff into the preparation stage? It is important from a coaching perspective that we understand the stages of change and approach coaching with a mindset that resistance to change is really only lack of preparation for the change. There really is no such thing as resistance to change. It just means more work is needed to move staff from pre-contemplation or contemplation to being prepared. You might be wondering how you will know who is ready. There are two important variables that we can use to gauge readiness for change. These two variables are importance and confidence. We can think about these concepts, importance and confidence, as the formula we can use to determine readiness. One without the other can indicate some level of readiness, but the equation is not yet complete. Take a moment to review the types of questions under each of the readiness concepts you see listed here on the slide. You may have already made the connection to the previous skill we have learned about and practiced. The getting and giving information skill from the previous module, along with the concepts of importance and confidence, will provide us with the knowledge needed to assess who is ready. These are some common comments you may hear as staff are being asked to change their professional practices. The first two comments reflect a lack of importance or value for the change. The second two reflect statements you may hear when someone isn't confident that the new practice is going to work. Picking up on comments such as these will help you identify the readiness work needed to move individuals through the stages of change. Let's look at a few more examples. I'm guessing you may have heard comments like these. When starting a new initiative, you may hear something similar to the first 
comment listed here. As change begins to take place in an organization, it is likely you may hear comments similar to the second and third statement. Please pause the video and follow the prompts on the slide. Being able to provide a rationale to staff members who may not yet be ready for change has been an effective strategy in moving from pre-contemplation or the contemplation stage to being prepared. Some of you may already be aware of how to use rationales for this purpose. For those of you that are not sure, here is a working definition. A rationale is a brief statement that is associated with goals and presented in an if-then format. A key word in this definition is brief. We want to avoid overwhelming the individual or group with too much information. We want our rationales to focus on the big ideas. An example of a brief rationale is, if we take time to teach our school-wide behavior expectations in all locations to all our students, then we can expect to have less behavior problems. In this example, the coach is focusing on the goal of reducing behavior problems across the school. Here is another example. If we teach our elementary teachers how to analyze and use the Acadian's benchmarking data to adjust instructional practices, then we will see an improvement in student reading outcomes. So what is the big idea this coach is focused on? Pause the video and discuss with your partner or group. Providing rationales in the context of a change process has a number of benefits. Most importantly, it respectfully supports a deeper understanding of why processes and practices will be changing by encouraging expression of the questions or concerns individuals may have. By providing rationales, we may see an increase in buy-in and confidence in the decision-making. The ultimate outcome we are hoping for is that members of the staff can be supportive of what is being asked of them rather than feeling like they are being forced to comply. One thing to keep in mind as we use this skill is that repeated explanations may be needed throughout the change process. The guidelines we want to keep in mind when using rationales is, the focus, is to focus on a brief and concise statement. We really want to avoid being perceived as lecturing others. When developing a rationale for a specific individual or group, we want to have identified their stage of readiness as we need to provide a rationale that matches their readiness to hear this information. In other words, we need to know how the change that's being introduced will affect the person or group you are interacting with. An example of this, of this might be sharing with the elementary teachers that the district is going to be adopting a new reading program we should be able to provide a rationale as to the purpose of this, of this decision and what the change will mean for them at the classroom level. So what are some strategy we, strategies we can consider using when supporting staff members who are indicating they are not quite ready for the change that is happening? There are two important ways you can reframe thinking for those who may not see the importance or have the confidence in the face of change. You might reframe information by providing assurance that the upside of taking the risk to change or, or point out the risk of not making the change. For example, if we develop and implement our district coaching system, then our school teams will have the support they need to successfully implement implement PBIS. Or if we don't develop and implement a district coaching system, then our school coaches and teams will struggle to implement PBIS with fidelity. At a basic level, we want to use active listening skills to listen for questions or concerns. We want to provide clear information that reflects we have heard those concerns while focusing on the big ideas. Active listening skills, as we discussed in the first coaching module, are a powerful tool and provide you as a coach a means to navigate challenges you may encounter. When faced with a challenge, coaches acknowledge the concerns they are hearing and use rationales to respond. 
It is important that when coaching, you don't perceive the pushback or challenges you may encounter as personal. Remember, we are trying to, through coaching, facilitate individuals through the stages of change. When you encounter some difficulty, this is an indicator that you may need to change your strategy or let the conversation come to an end and then plan how you might use a different strategy next time. Effective coaching includes seeking permission to share information with someone instead of jumping into delving, or excuse me, into delivering your rationale. You can learn a lot about what may be causing the challenge by seeking to understand that person's perspective. You might also use a sentence starter such as, it sounds like you need more information about, or I'm hearing some frustration about, or it makes sense to me that you are wondering about, or would you like the opportunity to learn more? This is the end of this module in your opportunity to practice using rationales. Please pause this video and follow the prompts on the slide. When you are ready, you may access the next Coaching Foundation of Skill module, which will focus on developing and maintaining relationships.